Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. The Siren Planet, written by Swift Hound. Earth, Terra, the beautiful hell. The Siren Planet, whatever you call it, it's a dull, a strange place. The humans mostly use the first two terms, and only jokingly refer to it with the other well-known names. For them, it's just a planet. Their home, a place in which they can go to and from, live and flourish in. They go outside their habitats and breathe the air. They strip down their garments and swim in the natural waters. They run, play, work, travel, grow, and live on that shining gem in the void. Earth, a plain name for a planet that cannot be replicated in its vibrancy. Now for the more interesting names, the beautiful hell, a name as old as humanity's discovery, a name given by the more and slightly unnerved discovery crew. They picked up radio signals, a good bunch of them, while exploring that part of the galactic arm. They, of course, went closer to see what was causing it. A lost probe, an active probe, some weird interaction between solar bodies, a culture. Whatever produces non-standard radio waves is always interesting, no matter what it actually is. A probe in that sector would likely have been millennia old. To find one still working would have been a small miracle, though not unseen. Their ship turned and raced towards the signals, making better adjustments the closer they got. The ship informed them that they were approaching a heliosphere, which likely ruled out the possibility of probes. It wasn't very possible that such an old relic could broadcast strong enough signals through the effects of a sun. The crew got excited at that. It was either a freaky stellar body producing the signal naturally, or a brand new culture. They dropped out of FTL far away from any of the planets, but just a bit away from the orbit of the last planet. The signals were able to be accurately traced to the now infamous marble. The crew became ecstatic. This was a civilization. The dust was cleaned off from the stealth field and then only used when new civilizations were discovered. They had to gauge basic information and language before making actual contact. It took an entire week for the ship's computer to work out the working translation matrix. Hundreds of them, actually. The humans hadn't exactly unified in anything, not even language. This week must have been like waiting to dig into a cake, but never getting the okay to do so. The wait made some of them insane, I'm sure. Now with a good cargo load of new languages, they went on to translating them. Now on the 200th anniversary of the Krakatoa volcano's eruption, efforts are still continuing in attempting to restart the volcano for scientific and energy needs. The hot magma could provide a stable and cheap power source, while further accelerating understanding of deeper reaches of our planet. A red zone warning has been given to the entirety of the southern Finland. The officials recommend staying away from the highways and driving only if necessary. A total of 55 centimeters of snow is predicted to land on the most of the country, with the negative temperatures of negative 20s. It is imperative to dress warmly for any outside activities. The Mariana Trench submarine has surfaced with all crew in safe condition. Last week's scare as the large part of the submarine experienced a collapse, effectively splitting the crew in two as the midsection crumbled. Emergency tanks luckily began working and slowly lifting the submarine from the nine kilometers it had reached before the accident. The ozone gap has reached a healthy layer just a decade ago, and the effort of the environment has been amazing. With the slowing of the ice cap melting and the efforts to refreeze large areas, global cooling is now being experienced for the fifth year in a row. Many, oh so many broadcasts were heard and translated by the computer, but those are some of the highlights the crew mostly focused on. It seemed like this new civilization was one of science and progress, even if they seemed to be rather nonchalant about disasters and catastrophes. The ecstatic crew began to close in on Earth, all of them curious to find out more. They could already see a large presence of satellites and other such objects flying all through the system. A closer inspection revealed habitats on the moon of Earth. 
the crew knew that a species that could send their own beyond their own atmosphere could be nothing else except a magnificent addition to society. They approached the planet even further, to the distance of their moon. They could finally get accurate readings of the planet without the possibility of alerting the natives. They shook a little. Tidal storms visible from space as clouds moved at blinding speeds. The ground moved with large plates beneath the crust. The planet would look nothing like it does now in a billion years. They knew that the untranslated parts had to be measurements, but now they had a chance to put them into perspective. Their submarine had reached pressures unimaginable before partly crushing. The crew still survived. It wasn't even immense news, just a part of the daily happenings. The volcano was massive in size. If the humans succeeded, it could have powered half of their world for millions of years without any trouble. Frozen water rained from the sky, in enough volume to cover half a sapient in it, the temperature freezing them in minutes. The readings indicated that the planet had gone through what can only be described as a fever. Temperatures had risen due to the sheer scale of the technological acceleration. The crew decided to risk a pulse scan, a single pulse that could reveal even microbial life. Oh, how their skin must have crawled at the readings. Every blasted surface and crevice were teeming with life. Viruses, bacteria, fungal spores were all flying with the wind and rain of the planet. They saw what can only be described as the melting pot of everything that could be a danger to higher life forms. Bacteria and such existed on all planets. They are a very source of life. But this was almost a cruel joke. Everything was on that planet. Every form of bacteria, capable of any sort of thing, just living alongside everything else. A mostly temperate surface with enough climate to support nearly any species, including aquatic ones. A good, strong gravity to host healthy muscle and bone growth. Resources, wealth, energy... Everything a society could want. The extreme weathers, while disturbingly plentiful, could easily be prepared for. The planet even looked beautiful. Green and blue, covering almost the entire planet. It called out to anyone who laid eyes on it. The radio messages drawing the interest of anyone in reach. The beautiful hell. Picturesque in every way to the naked eye. Even perfect if you were to stay for an hour or two but the bacteria would eventually get you. It could take a long time for a compatible one, but eventually one would pass through your membranes and begin to grow inside you. You might fight it off, but you might not. With the sheer amount of bacteria, you would certainly succumb to one of them, even the humans do, regularly. I make this situation sound more serious than it is, though. Even if it is very compelling story, quite minimal efforts help to fight the issue when humans travel around. He won't get sick if you don't land on the planet and breathe the air or water. The humans won't infect others either. Everyone leaving the planet goes through a refined process of bacteria replacement. Their bodies are cleaned of the symbiotic and other bacteria, and replaced with ones that cannot multiply without a very specific chemical. Sure, the bacteria can come into contact with you, but it'll die off quickly without a stable source of the, uh, <laughs> bacterium. Compatible bacteria from normal planets that fit the human biology are also used for more long-term solutions. The humans love to solve problems with indefinite fixes instead of patchwork ones. Interplanetary travel has also begun checking all species for harmful bacteria. Galactic disease expansion has dropped by 58.45%. There now exists over-the-counter bacteria mixes for hundreds of different planets, readily available for any human to acclimate. It gives a horrible diarrhea for a week or so, I hear. Earth also provides an excellent study ground for how bacteria develops, and even more importantly, how to fight the rampant bacterial growth that happens in Earth. Earth's bacteria is highly evolved and refined when compared to other life-hosting planets. It would become extremely dangerous if the same phenomena began to happen elsewhere. Earth's bacteria could quite literally overtake a planet, within months if it was introduced. The galaxy's smallest invasive species, so to say. Only travelers from Earth are checked, since the humans have successfully limited the planet's bacteria completely. Other human planets are wholly safe, 
to visit. The siren planet, singing a luring melody, showing a beautiful surface, just waiting to make you a part of the bacterial mass. End of story. I just quickly want to thank the Tier 5 patrons and channel members, Alithia Barkey, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Albard and Gusta, Arcadian, Lord Azrakal, and Joe Kambaka, 